Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I introduced what a Hellback Array is, and also I'm performing an Ansoft Maxwell simulation of it. This is a part 1 video of a series of 4, and let's get to it. What is a Hellback Array? Well, essentially, a Hellback Array is a special arrangement of permanent magnets that arguments the magnetic field on one side while cancelling the magnetic field near zero on the other side. Well, the image you have here is from a simulation that I have done a couple of days ago. And basically, that's what a Hellback Array is. Well, let's move forward and talk about what I am to introduce in this video, which is the simulation of a circular Hellback Array. Well, let's explain a little bit more what a Hellback Cylinder is or a circular Hellback Array. Notice that I mentioned a Hellback Cylinder. It's nothing more than a circular Hellback Array extruded to the 3D dimension. Well, so a circular Hellback Array it's a magnetized circle, or in 3D dimension, a cylinder. Ideally, these structures they would be created for an infinite length cylinder of magnetic material, with the direction of the magnetization continuously varying throughout it. And, well, that's quite hard to achieve both real life and in simulation. For that matter, we would like to change that a little bit more in order to perform a good, a good uh, geometry in the software. So what is the direction of magnetization that this description I just gave means? Well, you see arrows here, right? Those arrows, they're essentially pointing out to the direction of the magnetic field. There's a convention that the north direction of it is pointing as the arrow is pointing. So you have here different arrows in the same magnet. And it would be quite hard to achieve a single magnet that would have many different directions. And in order to ease it up a little bit, we can actually divide this big magnet into sections of small magnets, in which for each arrow you have one magnet. So here we have 12 arrows. So the idea is that to simplify, to simplify the geometry, we could easily just let's say, divide the geometry by 12 sectors, each one of 30 degrees, and then we have each sector with one arrow. Essentially, one different, uh, each sector, each geometry would have a, uh, its own magnetic direction. That, it's quite, that simplifies a lot both the numerical solution and the creation of it. Well, what we have here is also that these special arrangements of magnetization create some special phenomenon inside of the cylinder or circular Hellback array. This first one, you have a no field zone inside of the cylinder. In the second one, you have this flow going forward. In the third one, you have them in a snowflake kind of configuration. And going into details of what each one of them means in their specific video. Here is the main place of Excel. For this part one video, I'll be teaching step by step. So for the other videos, I can be a bit quicker. So let's go. The first thing you should do here is to create a 2D model of it. So here you can have a 3D model, 2D model, and so on. So I'll choose the 2D design. The software is calculating a little bit. Very well. Very good. So now we are in a 2D design. You see the axis. We are in the XY plane, plane, plane. And what we want to do is that we would like to rotate the geometry we are doing in this 2D uh, scenario here. And in order to rotate the geometer, we would like to change the system, um, the solution type of this. Uh, geometry here we are creating and to change that we go here solution types change the geometry mode to cylindrical it's very good to check if you are in the magnetic static uh, setup that's the setup in which you can calculate the magnetic uh, field and magnetic uh, relations so here okay you're going to see the change of the one of the 
one of the axes to Z. And that is that whatever geometry we create here, if you want to extrapolate to the 3D dimension, it's going to be around the Z axis in a cylindrical coordinate system. And that's what it's done, it has done. So for now, okay, let's follow up creating a rectangle. This rectangle here is going to emulate the magnet in the picture we just saw. So here in the bottom right, we can see some X, Y, and Z uh, coordinates here. So this is the coordinates in which you want your geometry to start. I'm going to place it as a 10 millimeters at X, keep it zero on, on Y, uh, obviously, and put it like zero on Z as well. You can see that it is in millimeters and OK. For now, we can choose the dimensions in X, Y, and Z of the rectangular we are creating. And this idea of choosing here on the right uh, bottom of it is going to be perpetuated around the other videos as well. So that's why I'm taking a bit low, slow here to explain this quite nicely. So let's change this to 10 millimeters and the Z direction as well to 10 millimeters so we can have a good square here. We cannot see it because we are too zoomed in. Let's go to zoom to fix right in the left hand corner right here. And then we see it right here. Very good. For now, we have done the geometry. It's quite simple and we need to extrapolate it to a 3D dimension. So let's go to 3D design, create a 3D design. So angle of sweep. So we said we needed uh, 12 magnets according to the image of the configuration I saw I, I showed before. In order to do that, if we take a, a, a circular shape, which is a 360 degree and divided by 12, we're going to achieve a 30 degree uh, for each magnet. But I do want to get a 30 degree for each magnet. But in order to extrapolate and have the axis facing the middle of the magnet, uh, of each magnet, I want to have this to be 15. And I'm going, it's going to make a little bit more sense on the following steps. So let's move on. So for now, uh, pressing OK, leaving the rest as default, we get to have this kind of rectangular shape, a trapezoidal shape. And the idea here is to use the, the, the mirror duplicate uh, tool and face it right here in the edge, then you could have like the same image being duplicated here without losing the, the other one. So we choose them both. Hold on. Yeah, and then we unite them. This is a Boolean unite uh, option too, and we can have it in the monitor as well and choose Boolean and choose unite. It's the same path. It's a different path with the same result. Uh, then it's already united. So here you see the X axis is going right through the material. And that's what we want. If we had to had if we had to have the, the sweep when we were in the 2D dimensions to follow up in the 30 degree angle, uh, we wouldn't have this. We would have the, the 30 degree uh, input to be made it um, around the X uh, axis to the uh, y axis and the, the geometry would have been made it in this area here and not through the, the center of the axis and that would be a bit hard to uh, to follow up um, the next steps if that would be the, the result you get. So if we have this here, let's follow up doing um, the duplicate around axis and we would like to select the z axis right here as a duplicatable axis we want to get. And the angle, this should be the 30 degrees because by uniting two 15 degrees geometries, we have a full 30 degree one, and then we add another one right next to it. So this will show that it is right next to it. And then we follow up by adding more and more and more until it fills up to 12. 12 should create a complete circle, and then we have the geometry here. And each one of these uh, geometries, they are supposed to be the magnets. So for now, we have the geometry almost done. Let's go back to the 2D design so we can see what else we can do. We choose as default here because we want to see the XY plane. Let's keep the geometry aligned with the XY plane we chose. So let's go. For here, for now, 
we have the, the, the perfect uh, sh shaped circle here, which are the representation of the image we saw at the very first beginning of this video. And now we want to align each one of these magnets to the direction of the, the, the magnetic field of them. And to do that, we have to understand how Maxwell works. So if we get here to one of those faces, let's say this first one, and choose assign material, let's change, let's choose any kind of material because the result will be the same for what I want to show you. So let's go to here, uh, my bad. So let's choose one magnetic, uh, uh, one permanent magnetic uh, material. Uh, so let's go to the neodyme already. So we have here a neodyme iron alloy. This will work. We go to edit, and here we can see that we have the X, Y, and Z components. And for those, you have a value of one to the X component and a value of zero to the Y and Z components. This is telling the software that when the, the, the coordinate system for this material, for the geometry that has this material assigned, um, the coordinate system is going to create whatever uh, calculation about the magnetic uh, the magnetic uh, field uh, aligned with a vector of unity one in the x direction, and other uh, all the other directions will be zero. So what this is saying is that the north direction of the magnetic field uh, is going to follow up the x coordinate coordinate and x component so there are many ways to follow up uh with the completion of aligning all the geometries with the with the, the the magnetic field uh that you want but what i'm going to do now is going to create relative uh relative um how can i put that i'm going to create relative access to each one of the geometries the idea is that by uh, centering the x coordinates to this one and that one and that one is a very specific way, I get to align each one of them individually. And that's what I want to achieve. So let's follow up. First of all, let's get them all very well. And let's change the material of them already. That's a good bracket. Uh, so now we go to the neo neodyme alloy. The idea of choosing this is because it is a a permanent magnet material, a iron, ma uh, iron magnet material, uh, and it will work as a magnet. Well, very good. It's all chosen to be of the alloy we want, and then we go into creating the coordinate system we want. We create, we, we choose these, hold on, we choose this button right here, which is create relative coordinate system, and we choose the, the origin of it, and then we choose the, the system the, the, the center, or it doesn't have to be the center, but it has, it, uh, but, sorry, my bad. It has to be the center of the geometry, but it doesn't have to be the exact uh, center of it. It can be like uh, in whatever distance from the from the zero here. The idea is just to align the unitary vector of it. So I'm going to do it for this one, and then I'm going to create other ones for each one of the geometries for, for here as well. And you can see the geometry, uh, the, the axis changed. That's what we want. We want that axis to change for each one of them. So this change, uh, this change we just got here is a, uh, it's a relative coordinate system just being created for, for this area here. We haven't assigned the geometry to this uh, coordinate system yet, but that's what we're going to do a little bit further. So let's create the other ones. So we have this one here as well, and this one. And I'm going to accelerate the video for the other ones. Very good. So now we have all the relative uh, coordinate systems being created for each one of the uh, going uh, going through the center of each one of the geometries we created, and that what that's what we want. So that for now. Uh, we are completed here, and then we choose the geometry now. For this geometry, we are going to assign here on the left corner the orientation. And for that orientation, we choose the CS1 orientation, which will be assigned to the right direction we want. You could name all of the re related coordinate systems as well, but for in order to keep it quick, I won't name it, okay? 
but it's better for you to name it so you have a better, um, so you don't make any mistakes in the process. So let's go. Let's choose the other one here, and then we choose the CS2 because the way I chose it is already aligned, so it's easier for you to get it. You see here in the center of it, you have this very tiny relative axis here pointing where we want according to the main to the picture I showed you at the beginning, which is the, the picture of the camps that of the fields we want for each one of these geometries. So let's keep assigning, and I will I will get to it when we finish when it's finished. Very well, so now we have um, all of the geometries re related with the coordinate system we created, the relative coordinate system we created. So you can see right in the middle of it, the change of the uh, relative system, uh, coordinate system, uh, related to the global system and that you can see that all of those are aligned. The X line is aligned right to the middle of the geometry and that's what we want because when we are to simulate the, the magnetic field, we would like to have the magnetic field um, numerical solution to, we would like the software to know that the alignment, the, the, the north part of the magnetic field uh, is going in that direction, the X direction. That's going to tell the software that we want this magnet here that is selected to have the north uh, magnetic field of it to go in that direction. And that's good for, for to get an accurate result. That's uh, there are many ways you have to create this. This is the way I, I chose. You can have your own way. There are many paths to Rome. So let's keep going. Now we want to create a region around it in which uh, can be a rectangular shape region. And let's choose here, for example, a minus 50 um, on the X direction and a minus 50 here as well. And then uh, we give it like, let's say 100 and 100 as well. Very good. So now we have a perfect square region. What we have to do is to select all the edges of this object and give it as a boundary, a set of boundary to it. It's going to be a balloon boundary. It's called the frontier. The idea of this boundary is that uh, this will be the place in which the, the software will calculate the numerical solution. This will be the, the boundary layer uh, between what we want to calculate and what we don't want to calculate. And this boundary layer will be the surface, uh, actually in the 3D, it will be the volume inside of this uh, vacuum rectangular. See vacuum here is because the vacuum is assigned to this rectangular. Um, very good. So now we would like to put some transparency in it in order to see what is beyond. And since it's vac vacuum, we don't have to see the shape of the rectangular. Very well. So now we go back to a 3D uh, design. We create a new design in order to have everything we create in this huge design in the new one. Uh, the idea is now that we have to uh, put some uh, length on the Z axis and we want to keep um, the, the geometry in a very cubic uh, shape. You can put other shapes, but that's the shape I want. So I'll put it as a 10 millimeter since we created the geometry in the X, Y direction to be, uh, uh, to, so since we created the geometry to be uh, a square in the plane there in the in the in the two G plane. Uh, okay, so let's go. Very well. So now we have it here, uh, the three D dimension, uh, the three D uh, design of it, and then we can follow up, seeing if everything is okay. So let's check what we need to put it more. So we go here to this bottom here called validate. We check it. So look, oh, we need a setup analysis, and that is a setup. We haven't done that yet. How do you do it? So you press any, any other place here. You can do it manually. You go here and then you, you press analysis and then you add a solution setup or you can press in this button here. It's quite faster and then you, you, you create a solution setup as well. So now that, that the geometry is completed, we can go to the solution setup and very well. I'm not naming anything and I'm keeping it as default in order to quick up the results. But if you want something more refined, you can check the convergency as well, as well as the maximum number of passes in which we we'll refine the numerical solution that is being done inside of the uh, control volume you have here. Very well, okay, very good. So now let's validate again. We see that nothing is re required more, nothing more is required. So we go to analyze all. 
this will create some meshing around the, 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 the geometry. Meshing is the process of uh, separating the geometry inside the, the, the big hack rectangle here into very tiny uh, regions in small complex, uh, less complex regions, and that will, will have the numerical solution to work. Um, so yeah, I'm creating this. The software now is running, and in a second we will have the results. Very well, the results are done. And now what we have here is that we have a normal competition of the simulation on server. It's saying that adaptive passes is not converged, but this will not change the results of it. Adaptive passes, they are just some uh, minor uh, refinement that the uh, software tries to do. Um, but since I created something very rough, it didn't quite get uh, the refinement uh, criteria to converge. But okay, that's okay. Right now we are moving to the field overlays. Uh, what we want to do here is to select all the geometry we want. And as a requirement of this project, I want to see, for example, uh, the magnetic vector field, the, the magnetic field vector and the magnetic field magnitude. I'm going to select the magnetic field vector and check what's inside of the, the magnet uh, Halbach array. Choosing all objects, it's done. Let it default. Let's see what's created inside for now. If we rotate it, we see some arrows. Those are the arrows of the magnetic field inside the coil. And we see that inside there are minor arrows uh, that are quite residual and quite uh, not strong at all. And this is very good. That's what we are trying to see. We can get a better view uh, if the, the the field here is non-existent or at least like um, uh, can be neglect, neglected uh, by getting the magnetic field magnitude. And we're going to do that now. So follow up with the field overlays again, uh, choose all the geometry, and then we go to magnetic field magnitude, and then we all objects again, let the rest as default. As well, you can change in your own simulation. And then we, it's done very well. So what this is showing us, there is some, uh, hold on. Yeah, there is some magnitude here coming out of it, uh, but it is quite slow, but right in the middle of it, you have none. The idea is that you shouldn't have none inside, but if in a practical way, what you would see is that there's no uh, magnetic field here. Of course, there's a slightly uh, magnetic field uh, coming at you to, to, to outside of it, but as you see here in the in the table on your left left hand side, it is quite um, a small number, the blue one. And you see that for that, it can be neglected. So what we had in the first image saying that the magnetic field in the center, when you when you you put the Halbach arrays of each one of the magnets here in those positions, you cancel out the magnetic field in the center. That's what we want. So we can say that the numerical solution here procedure proceed uh, with a good analysis. And for last but not least important, um, I'm going to show you, let's just put this view here out in order to move on because it's, it's quite heavy and it was taking a little bit too much of my computer. All right, I can put this view out as well just in order for us to see what we're going to do next. The next, the next thing we're going to do is see the flow lines of it, the flux lines. The flux lines, they are visible in the 2D pattern. So we're going to go back to the 2D design and apply the same idea as before. Check if it's validated. Oh, we need an analysis that set it up. So let's put a setup. Let's keep it as default. Same idea as before. And then check again. Everything's OK. We move to analyzing. So analyze. Very good. It's running. Since it's 2D, it's way less heavier. Um, but it's still going to take a little bit. My computer is, one of, is not one of the best. OK. OK, it's done. And say normal completion. OK, everything fast. Very good. So let's choose again the geometry, every single geometry of it. OK, and we go to field overlays and let's see the flux lines. The flux lines are going to appear in just a second. They're measured uh, in uh, web per meter. And as we can see here, the flux lines, they give us a really good example of what's going on. Flux lines shows the the flow of the, the 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 magnetic field here and you see that it's, it's quite none and for those lines that are going through the middle here there are just some residuals from the analysis since the analysis was not quite uh, representative 
of the reality. I didn't uh, refine it at all. But as you can see here in the corner, uh, uh, in the edges, in the edges part is the really important part. You can see that they are uh, interpolated into a very mild one and a very strong one. And they are almost the same value. Uh, you see like the top of the, the, the red thing here uh, is saying it is like of this magnitude and the bottom is like the negative, which is almost the same. And for that, it, what it's saying is that it's canceling out every single one when it comes to the middle here. And that's what we want. Very well. Very well. And uh, now we can also create something here that is quite nice and important, which is the animation of any kind of field overlay we wanted to. So in order to create an animation, uh, there are many ways to create it. I like to create it this way. So I check the XY plane. So it is right in the bottom of the geometry I have. And the idea here is that we want to create a field overlay of what we, we want to see. So we go into, let's say, magnetic field magnitude. So like all objects. Then we go down. We have the magnitude of the field in the XY plane. OK, this is, that's good. So now what we want to do is to see the animation of this going, sweeping the Z axis. So we go here, we create. We select the field overlay, and then we go animate. We check to uh, normalize distance, which is the distance in the Z direction. Then we put it like, let's say, 20 steps, so it can go quite detailed uh, while it's going up. And OK, let's go. Press OK. This is running the animation. And for now, we can see the animation going on. So we cannot see the object, uh, the inside of the object. But if we put like the, the geometry of it, if we choose the object and put some transparency in it, we would see every single magnet. We will see the magnetic, uh, the magnitude of the magnetic field inside of it. Let's just unchoose it. Yeah. So now you can see it. Um, so this is a good way to visualize what's going inside of it and also to display your simulation. So let's move forward doing the same thing, but with the vectors. So we choose the plane, X, Y plane. Then we go here to the field overlays and then we go into the magnetic field vector. Do the same thing, all objects keep it default, then let's move on. I would like only to see the vector, so let's do this. Press magnetic B1, which is the magnitude of the magnetic field we just created, and hide selected objects in active view. Very well. Now we are seeing only the, the, the vectors, and then we can do the same thing. We can animate. There's another, there's a one animation that was the one we just did. I'm going to create a new one. Same normalized distance into the z-axis we wanted. Same 12 steps at 20 steps. And let's see what the, the software gives us. Very well. You can see that as it goes up, some of the arrows kind of move a little bit. Uh, but that's some so a solution residual. But the main idea is that they keep the same direction since the, the magnet is facing the same uh, axis all the time. Very good. So. This is what we have. We wouldn't have a simulation in the, the we couldn't create a GIF for the flux lines uh, on the on the on the 2D uh, design because it's already 2D. So we we leave it as just as an image. So let's keep with only the GIFs of the B vector, the magnetic uh, field uh, magnitude vector. No magnitude. Uh, so that's it. Thank you very much.